Hello, and welcome to the historic Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church here in the city of Prestine, Palestine, Texas. We are so excited that you decided to join us for morning worship today. Come on in, kick your feet up, and let's praise the Lord. Come on in. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. Amen. Amen. But I promise you, if you lend me your amen, amen, if you give me about a good 15, 13, 17, 19 good gospel preaching minutes, I promise you, I'll sit down. Amen. 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 But there is a word from the Lord. Amen. And that word has to do with what we're serving today. Amen. And that is the Holy Communion. That word is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26 through 31. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 26 through 31. Just want to say thank you to all of our members. Good to see uh, amen. The Sanders family, good to see Sister Clerkley. Amen. Good to see. Amen. All of our brothers and sisters. Amen. Sister Collier. Amen. Our security team in the back. Amen. Amen. Just so good. Amen. To be in the house of the Lord. Let's give our musicians a hand. Amen. J.C. Young on the drums. Amen. Doing a marvelous job. Amen, 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 amen. First Corinthians, amen, chapter 11, verse 26 reads, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But watch this. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, Many are weak and sickly among us, and many are asleep. Finally, verse 31 reads, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. May God have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, for a little while today. The preacher's going to preach about self-examination. Self-examination. Uh, Sister Peterson, the world that we live in today is full of issues. <laughs> you would agree with me on that, would you? Amen. When we look at the landscape of our nation. It's stressful, church, to even turn on the TV and watch what's happening in our world. Am I right about it? For example, just last Sunday, when my wife and I made it home from church, turned on the TV and discovered there was a shooting at a mega church in Houston, Texas. Pilgrim Rest, I need to tell us today, don't you dare think for a second that someone on any given Sunday, somebody who may not be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, someone who decided not only to let Satan ride, but they got out the car walked to the passenger side and gave him the keys and let him drive. Won't attempt to try and disrupt 
the service of God. See, we look for the devil to show up looking ugly, beat up, and worn down. But the white, we anticipate him to have a red bodysuit on with a long tail and a pitchfork in his hand. But my brothers and sisters in the house today, I beg the devil with you. In the study of hoobology, Satan shows up when his hair died fried and laid to the side. He knows how to put on a three-piece suit and a bow tie. He knows how to put on some smell good that would make you melt when he walked past you on Sunday morning. Not only that, but he has the order of service down pat. Yeah, he knows when to wave his hand. Satan knows how to clap in unison with the choir. He knows how to do his fake holy dance. He knows how to make himself cry to receive sympathy from the saints of God. He knows how to shout when the preacher is closing his sermon. He knows how to speak in tongues. He kills, he kills, he all of that kind of stuff. He knows how to do all of this. So if Satan knows how to play church, none of us should be shocked when we let our guard down and he shows up and he shows out in church. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Church, we need to watch, fight, and pray and not necessarily in that order. Facts are, if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Sabrina, if you give him an inch, he'll take a yard. If you leave the door cracked to, the, to your heart, that slithery serpent will kick the door in and completely take over your life. Yeah, I know you say weed is real innocent, but weed leads to cocaine. Cocaine leads to meth. So you got to be careful of the tricks of Satan and how he tries to do you. Give me another example, Reverend Peterson. Yeah, this past Wednesday night, there was a championship parade in Kansas City, Missouri. The KC Chiefs were celebrating their third Super Bowl win just as the celebration was coming to a close. You had some young, snot nose, still wet behind the ears, kids who decided to settle their dispute with a gun battle in the presence of over 100,000 folk. You got to be stupid and crazy not to think that you were going to miss everybody in the bunch. And now a family of a young lady who was celebrating life in one second now is dealing with the agony of the loss of a loved one. And now they're planning a funeral when all she was doing was having fun. Minister White, Reverend Granger, preachers, deacons, and anybody else who calls themselves a Christian. It's time out, Sister White, for us to be praying, church. Give your life over to God and surrender to his will. Grandmama said the time that is, school won't be no more. You're going to have to stick your sword in the sand and shed of time and study law no more. You gotta go to God in meekness. You gotta go to Him in humility. You gotta go to Him with a humble spirit, knowing that it's Him who we live, it's Him who we breathe, and it's Him who we have our being. There was a time when we used the quote, here today, gone tomorrow. But no, no, my friends. We're here to 
today ain't gone today. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. We talked about this last week. All of us, including the preachers, need to lay aside every weight and sins that so easily beset us. I don't know when the last time you looked in the mirror, but when I looked in the mirror this morning, I'm very aware that there's a leak in this whole building, and my soul has got to move. Hair that was once black is turning gray. Body that was once fit ain't fit no more. I had a six pack, now I got a 12 pack. Is there anybody in here who knows that you gotta treat life every day as if it was your last? As we perform this self evaluation this morning. The first thing we need to inspect and examine is our motive. Lord have mercy. What is a self-examination? Brother McAllister, it's the action of examining one's own body for signs of illness. Help me, Holy Ghost. Self-exams can help detect, Reverend Granger, a variety of health issues, including cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. There are two types of self-evaluation that I want to talk about this morning. There's physical and then there's spiritual. Mother Crawford, let's talk about the physical first. Since this is black history, let's educate each other on the facts. Fact number one, statistics show that only 26% of black men after experiencing episodes of anxiety and or, and or depression are more likely than seek professional mental health services compared to 45% of white men who experience the same feelings. This speaks to all of us today that the stigma in the black community that men and women who struggle in different areas of life should not talk about their issues. Truth of the matter is, we need to stop our children and ask them what's going on when we see them being distant and unresponsive. Spouses, pause that job for a minute. When you know something ain't right with your husband or wife, you think they sleeping all day every day because they're tired? You think that they taking two hour showers because of skin restoration? Now something is going on in the inside of their minds that we need to find out. I hear so many wives say, oh, he a man. He'll figure it out. No, ma'am. It's your job to help him figure out what's wrong with him. We need to stop marching around the house talking about real men don't cry. That's a lie. Real men do cry. Real men do get depressed. Real men do feel suffering. Real men do worry about things. Real men do have self-doubt every now and then. Black men, young and old, it's perfectly okay to say that you're not okay. Fact number two, this is black history, right? Black women are about 40% more likely to die of breast cancer than white women. Black women have a lower five-year relative breast cancer survival rate compared to that of a white woman. Black women 
are more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer at a younger age, at later stages, and with more aggressive types of breast cancer than the white women. I'm not trying to teach anybody how to be freaky deaky this morning in here. But ladies and men, it's okay to examine your body. I know y'all don't like this kind of preacher. If something don't look right, if something don't feel right on your body, you better schedule a doctor's appointment and tell somebody what's going on. Every man in here ought to have a prostate check on an annual basis. Every woman in here ought to schedule a mammogram and have a breast examination at your yearly checkup. The second type of self-examination this morning, yeah, is a spiritual examination. This takes place when we look deeply into our own thoughts before looking at somebody else's. I'm so glad today, I said I'm glad today, that he looked beyond my thoughts and saw every one of my needs. Matthew 75 says, Thou hypocrite, cast out the beam out of your eye first, and then you'll be able to see clearly the moat in your brother's eye. Oh, you didn't like that? Let me say it like this. Mind your own business. Sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. We need to stop labeling others as sinners when we ourselves are not blameless. I can't talk about you lying if I'm sleeping around. Same thing. I can't talk about you stealing if I'm gossiping. Same thing. I can't talk about you whoremongering if I'm stealing money from the church. Same thing. We need to learn how to look at the man in the mirror and spiritually examine ourselves. But pastor, I hear you asking the question, how do I examine myself? And if I examine myself, what am I looking for? Well, the first thing is, what is our motive? Why? Do I go to work every day so I can provide for my family? Why do we attend church every Sunday? Do you come because mom and daddy taught you to come to church? Wrong reason. Do you give because it looks good to drop an envelope in the offering plate? Wrong reason. Do you participate in the Holy Communion because it's tradition to put on a black suit and a white dress. Wrong reason. It's found in the scripture. Scripture says the number one motive, Mother Hooper, should be because we do this in remembrance of him. The Bible says the same night that Judas was going to betray Jesus, that he took bread and after he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This too in remembrance on me. There it is, like matter. He took the cup and after he had supped, so did the others. There it is again, this too in remembrance on me. Why do we take the Lord's Supper? What does it mean to partake of this sacred ordinance? Well, the first question is, that we must answer is, what is the Lord's Supper? It's all Christians coming together, not to eat to get full, or not to drink to get drunk, but to remember what Christ 
redeemed for every last one of us on the cross of Calvary. How he bled, how he suffered, and how he was raised from the dead with all power in his hand. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of God. Yeah. What is our motive? Well, a motive is a reason for doing something, especially one that is hidden and not obvious. Lord have mercy. When a crime takes place, as the detectives are investigating the crime scene, the very first question that they ask or want to know is what was the motive? Yeah. Was your motive to collect insurance money from the life insurance policy? Was your motive, yeah, to cover up the affair that you were having with the side chick? Was your motive to get close enough to me to stab them in the back? Was your motive to come to church to get the phone number of that fine sister? Was your motive to drive your new car to church and cross? Young folk, that's a word for showing off. Was your motive to check the phone of your baby while they were asleep because you were hurt? In your past relationship, whatever your motive or reason was to do what you did, say what you said, and go where you went, if it doesn't involve the righteousness and holiness of God, then your personal agenda was nothing more than a spoiled plot to destroy the purpose and the promise of God. Build the rest. We got to be careful of hidden agendas that we have against the people of God. Because Watch this. What you thought would hinder me, it did nothing but elevate me. So keep on hating on me if you want to. Every time I preach, I go higher and higher. Every time I give, I go higher and higher. Every time I teach Bible study, I go higher and higher. Oh, you think that I'm making this up? Ask Joseph in the word of God. When Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit and thought he would kill him out of jealousy rage, the king's wife even lied on Joseph. Everybody turned their back on him. But watch this. Joseph said, you meant it for evil. But God turned that thing around and meant it for my good. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he turning it around. And when he turned it around, won't he turn your haters around? Won't he turn your backstabbers around? Won't he turn your problems around? Won't he turn your sickness around? Won't he turn your brokenness around? Won't he turn your depression around? Won't he turn your loneliness around? Won't he turn your hardships around? Is there anybody up in here, up in here, that don't mind praising the Lord? Thank you, God, for turning my situation I'm glad I ain't wearing no tie today. The second thing that we must do is we have to examine our heart. Lord have mercy. Look at verse 27. For the prophet, the Bible says, if we partake of this, with the wrong heart, we shall be guilty of the body and the blood of 
love the Lord what does this mean thank you for asking we dishonor what Jesus did for us on Calvary's cross we look past the sacrifice of him shedding his blood for the remission of our sins yeah let me put this down you can tell me that you love me all day long but your actions will prove how you really feel about me. Grandmama said the proof is in the pudding. What's on the inside will show up on the outside. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Whatever's on the inside is going to come out on the outside. David said in Psalm 51 and 10, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Sabrina, you can help me out with this one. There are four vows to the human heart. The aortic vow, the mitral vow, the tricuspis vow, and the pulmonary vow. Am I right about it, Sabrina? Each one of this, each one of these vows control the blood flow of your heart. But don't miss this, church, when a doctor places a stethoscope on our chest, the heartbeat that they hear is nothing more than each valve opening and closing. Somebody didn't get that. If any of these four valves are weak or stopped up, the beat won't be as strong as it should be. If there's anything in your life that's not pleasing to God, if there's any hatred in your heart against your fellow man, if we don't love like we should, the heartbeat of our church won't be as strong as it should be. If any valve of our church is clogged up, sometimes God has to perform open heart surgery. Lord have mercy. But the blessing is, it's not to hurt us, it's to help us. It's not to break us, but it's to bless us. David also said, search me, O God, and know my heart. And if you find anything that should not be, I give you permission, Jesus, to take it out and strengthen me. Whatever is not pleasing inside of me, please, Lord, take it out and give me a new heart. Look at your neighbor and say, take it out. Take it out. Take out envy. Take out jealousy. Take out that lying tongue. Take out that hatred. Take out that laziness. Take out whatever problem that's hindering us from getting closer to the cross. But the problem with the church today is we're afraid of what Jesus will find out if he examines our hearts. Lord, have mercy. I told you, yeah, that I wasn't going to hold you long today. Yes, I'm still on a high from yesterday. But the word of our God, the Bible says, before we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, let us examine ourselves, not from a doctor, not from a nurse, not from your neighbor, but it causes us to self-examine our own heart. If the motive or your heart ain't no right, the Bible says that there are consequences 
Thank you for joining us today for worship. We thank you and pray that something was said or done to encourage you through the word of God, that you will come back with us again and worship with us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Also, you may reach us on our Facebook page. And when you get on there, please like, share, comment, and follow us. You may also find our GiveLify link on our YouTube channel in the bio section. Again, we are so excited and thank you for joining us at the Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church here in the great city of Preston, Palestine, Texas. May God bless you and may God keep you. We'll see you again next Sunday.